What's going on, Stock Hours? Um, today's video is going to be on my favorite indicator, my favorite thing to look at when I'm trading, and that is level two. Um, we already have a level two video up on the Stock Hours channel, but you know, sometimes hearing things from a different perspective um, can sit well with someone or help you get a better understanding of it and um, see different ways that you can use this information in your trading. So basically, um, what level two is, it is the open order book of the market. It tells you the areas where buyers are set up waiting for their orders to get filled, and then the areas where sellers are set up waiting for their orders to get filled. So um, the areas where buyers are set up is called the bid, and then the areas where sellers are set up is called the ask. The bid is always gonna be under where the stock is currently trading at, and the ask is always going to be over where the stock is trading at. Um, not by a lot, just basically, let's say the stock is trading at um, 184.55. The bid, the closest bid might be 184.53. The closest ask might be 184.57, just for example. Um, but then, you know, that that's going to be the closest bid in the ask. So when you look on your trading platform, whatever, um, and it says this is where the bid is, this is where the ask is, those are always gonna be the closest levels. But then beyond that, you're gonna have more levels where buyers and sellers are set up at. So for example, in this example, um, 185 being a big psychological level is probably gonna have a lot more orders than 184.57 is gonna have. So you know, to break through 185 is gonna take a little bit more than breaking through 180. What, 457 just for example because it's going to take more volume and with um with that is going to take usually more momentum as well so um that is the basics of what level two is um now when you're using it in your trading what i do um there's a couple of things i i look at i first um well let's take a step back every stock reacts differently in different situations so let's say um, you're looking at a breakout of a key level on apple you might get in a good scenario a 50 cent move um, now if you get a breakout in netflix you can easily get a dollar two dollar move if you get a breakout in nvidia you can get the same thing sometimes even more um, so understanding your stock is going to be big at letting you know how much to expect on a breakout um but another thing with that um the incremental changes in the move into your key level is going to be something big and letting you know what to expect after the break so let's say um your stock is moving in five cent increments into your key level um you know, when it breaks that key level, usually it's not gonna break by a whole dollar. But now if you're having 30 cent, 40 cent, 50 cent increments, like incremental moves into that key level, then you could expect a much bigger break. So um, if we're moving, so in the first example I was giving, if we're trading at 184.55, and then we move by, you know, 10 cents at a time, so 184. Uh, 65 184.75 and then the 10 cent increment changes into a, a 20 cent increment so then we go from 75 to 95 and then now we're right at that 185 level um you could expect a better break than if we were just moving in 10 cent increments the whole time just because you can tell that momentum picked up closer to that key level so if that momentum remains then when we break that level um usually comes with volume, you're gonna have a much better move than if it was just the the slower 10 cent incremental jumps into that key level. So it is a, it's a really good way of identifying momentum within a stock, and especially when it comes to that key level, um, how the momentum reacts. So if it went the opposite way, if you're having 20 cent moves, and then it slows down to a 10 cent and then a five cent move into your key level, um, even if it does break that level, it might 
um, wick fake you out or it might even reject before it breaks so that's something to keep in mind is that you want to see um, usually the momentum picking up into that key level and not slowing down because that that just shows you that um, the key level is being respected and that um, in this example is upside so buyers were not able to keep that strength into the key level so if your profit target is a dollar past your key level break, you wanna see the momentum pick up at that key level, not slow down. Um, that basically shows you that your party, so buyers are really aggressive in pushing the stock past that key level into the next area of resistance. Um, so I'll show you a, a live example of what I'm talking about. Um, because, you know, it's one thing to talk about it, but to actually, um, see it in action is going to be, uh, pretty important in kind of learning how to, how to read this. So this is an example on Netflix. So my level two, you can see is right here. It's this little blue area. And then this is the stock chart. So. In this trade, I'm looking for a break of 400. And then my profit targets were, I had multiple targets. A lot of my trades, I try to have multiple targets, but it was dependent on the momentum into the break and after the break. So my targets were either gonna be 401 or 402. So if we have strong momentum, I'll try to hold to 402 if um if it's a weak break or whatever like that i might even just sell at the 400 break or I'll, I'll try to hold it to 401. so i'll let this play i'm actually gonna mute it so i can kind of tell you what i'm looking at here also um, before that a good way of getting better at reading level two um there's two different ways really one is just having screen time so basically the more you trade just focus on level two um, and how it moves and um, obviously the stock that you're trading so tesla's level two is going to move different than apple which is going to move different than netflix which is different than amazon pretty much every stock is is its own so understanding how your stock moves on level two is going to help you get used to it and know what to look for in breakouts and then another way of getting good at it since stock hours we post um like our live trade videos are all breakout scalps for the most part um basically re-watching those videos and um focusing on one thing at a time so this is what helped me a lot when i was um look you know on my path to profitability was just understanding every little thing so when you rewatch one of those live trade videos and then you're, you're just glued to level two and then you watch it again you could be glued to time and sales watch it again be glued to your stocks chart versus the correlation of the futures chart it helps you put everything together so that when you do trade in real time you know what you should be looking for and what red flags are going to be but um let's just show this video so since I'm looking for the 400 break to the upside, what I wanna see is this bid pushing up, um, meeting the ask or pushing through the ask, therefore pushing us to the next ask order. So we'll see. But yeah, again, my, my trade idea on this, I wanna anticipate the 400 break into 401 or 402 if there's good momentum. Um, one more thing, let's say I wanna get in at the 400 break. If we're having 50 cent jumps into 400, if I set my entry at 399.90, there's a good chance I'm gonna miss the entry and get in after the 400 break. So that's why we're always getting in before the break, anticipating the break. And um, a good way of knowing where to get in is to see how much the stock is moving into that key level. So. I'll play the video here. So just watch this bit in the ask. So I'm gonna pause it. Um, 
Right now the ask is at 399.54 and the bid is at 399.12. So what we want to see is this bid um, hitting you know 399.54 or higher and then pushing us to the next ask order and then keep seeing that thing repeat. Obviously um, no trade is going to be a straight line up into your um, profit target. So for example, if we're having 30 cent jumps up, you don't want to see a dollar pullback during that move. If we're having 30 cent jumps up, you want to see maybe a 10 cent pullback or something like that. This just shows you that when the stock is moving, who is more in control. And um, if it's a 30 cent jump versus a 10 cent drop, in that example, the buyers are clearly in control. Anytime they make a move is way stronger than what the sellers do. So just keep looking at this bid and ask. So you see right there, um, it went away for a second, but we, we jumped up past that 50 whatever cent level and went to like 58 on the bid. So that's good. Also, another thing is this happens very quick. So the more screen time you get um, and the more you watch the live trades, the better you'll be at recognizing the momentum early because um, like I'm showing you, this happens very quick. So right now the bid is at 71 cents and the ask is at 87 cents. So we're right before the 400 level. So um, you wanna see this momentum continue and then break us through 400 really without any hesitation based off of the way it's moving right now. And you see just like that, the bid went to way above 400, 434 cents. So that's almost, that was like a 60 cent move in just that one break of 400 on the bid. Cause it went from like uh, 399.70 to now 430 cents. So um, that's a good break. I just wanna see, like now that I'm still in my position, I wanna see this momentum continue. Obviously, like I said, it's not gonna be a straight shoot up. You're gonna get slight pullbacks, but you don't want to see um, a bigger pullback than what your um, pushes are, at least in upside moves. So just keep uh, keep your eyes glued to this level two area. So you see, we we tested the 400 level and then quickly reclaimed it. So that's that's very good to see. So. Now that you see that buyers are really holding and defending this 400 level and we quickly tested it and now push this back up, um, you just wanna see the same thing we saw right before this 400 break. You wanna see the bid, meet the ask, and then push up into the next area of resistance and continue on. So right now the bid is at 26 cents, the ask is at 69 cents. So we wanna see this bid um, come up to this area, push the ask up and then keep pushing. So we're holding 400, that's good. And just like that, like you saw how quick that was, we went um, right above 400, 401 actually. So, and right there. So you see uh, my profit target was about 402. So we're hitting 402 on the ask. So I'm setting my order there now. Um, I only do limit orders when we have momentum pushes. So you can see this is uh, a time where clearly we're having that. Um, this is more of a advanced thing. If you're a beginner, just stick with market orders. Um, limit is risky and you might not get filled, but I was willing to take that risk because um, we were pushing very aggressively. So one more little push up and then that's gonna get filled. So you said I just got filled right there. Um, actually right at the top because we pulled back a little bit. And the ask broke 402. You just want to see this bid come up and kind of hold above 402. Just like we did at 400. And now 401, how we're holding above. Oh my God. Okay. So yeah, you want to see this bid go up to 402 and hold, hold above. So right around here, 
it's kind of holding kind of giving away um, yeah so it's still doing good and just look at how the bid react or how the ask reacts to the bid pushing up I already hit my profit target so I'm not in the trade anymore but um, the same principles still apply um, let's say you were in runners you just want to see um, the move continue but another thing that helped me um, get better at reading and understanding level two is um, like I said watch these videos but um, if you watch them in slower speed you can process it better so what I mean by that is if you come over here to the settings playback speed um, you can go to half speed and then you know let's say that's where you go. okay so let's say here if you're watching in half speed you can you can watch this movement a lot slower so so your brain can understand what's going on so you can see how the bid pushes the ass you see just like that watching in half speed it makes it easier to to understand so as a beginner that's what I'd recommend most of the time but obviously when you come to to the market it's not gonna be slowed down for you so this is why putting the work in outside of the market is gonna help obviously when you're trading because you're you'll be able to process things faster because you know what to look for um, but that's basically um, an example of what you want level two to look like in a in a breakout scalp so a momentum breakout scalp so basically you're in while the momentum is moving in your direction and before it starts turning around on you hopeful or in a perfect scenario you've hit your profit target and you're already out before it starts slowing down or pulls back on you or anything like that um, so that is um, a good example if you guys were curious what to look for so let's say you have um, two armies okay then you have your border basically so think of your border as your equilibrium price that's where the stock is trading at currently and then you have your you know green army and then your red army when um, so and then both of these armies they're you know you have your front line and then you have you know your secondary third all those so when one army or whatever gets rid of one army's front line they could push up a little bit and now the new equilibrium price has moved over a little bit this army would have to stay strong consistently and keep doing that to eventually uh, move the line farther and farther down so um, the same thing with stocks in a way you have the price that the stock is trading at and you have the the bid which is the buyers and then you ask which is the sellers and if you're looking at an upside play you want to see the bid keep on pushing the ask to where the stock is moving up you don't want to see it to where they're um, indecisive of who's actually in control you want to see that one is clearly stronger than the other um, and that's basically what a momentum move is and level two just shows you where the two armies are pretty much set up defending their area when one air one army gets taken out that area of defense is now clear so the um, other guys can take that area over um, it's a weird way of looking at it but kind of makes sense to me um, and that's pretty much what the point of this video is is thinking of a different perspective for the same thing so level two um, like I said we have a video on it already but just hearing a different perspective might click with someone's brain to where it's gonna make more sense for that person um, so hopefully this video helped someone or maybe you understood it before it just um, helped you uh, validate what you were already thinking uh, maybe seeing this example helped you realize um, these are the type of trades you should be taking and that some of the trades you were taking were maybe subpar um, anything like that but I think we went over everything or I guess one more thing when you increase the size of the incremental jumps so if you're going from 
400 to 450 to 400 or 401 to 40150 to now 40250 40350 moving from 50 cents to a dollar basically that is momentum increasing when you go from 400 to 450 to 401 to 40120 40140 40160 that's momentum slowing down so when the increase of the jump side or the when the the size of the jumps increases, momentum is increasing. When the size of the jump decreases, momentum is slowing down. So um, that's just another thing to know, um, especially as a momentum scalper. Understanding different ways to read momentum is going to be very important um, just outside of the candlestick charts. So level two is something I look at um, a lot more than some other things on my screen. So I would say I look at level two in my scalps, probably like 50% of my focus is on level two because I'm in and out very quick. So I need to understand really who's in charge and when. So I don't want to be in trades for me personally. I don't want to be in trades for 30 minutes. I'd rather be in trades for two minutes where everything is working out perfectly the whole two minutes and then I'm out when things start slowing down or reversing or whatever the case is but I think I said enough in this video for you guys to hopefully process some of it but I hope you guys have a good week um, let's, let's hit this week strong if you're watching this in the future I still hope you guys have a good week <laughs> but take care everybody peace